Hey guys, welcome back, it's Meg. We have a ton of information to go over today, so this is going to be a bit of a longer video than normal. We're going to talk about the class talent changes that we got, spec talent changes, the brand new Master of Harmony hero talents, a few updates to the tree that we've already seen, which is the Conduit of the Celestials hero talents, and then just a bit about the first impressions. Please be reminded that we are still in the early stages of Alpha, as I talk about abilities and talents, I'm mostly going to focus on the mechanics and the ideas behind the spells rather than actual numbers or tuning, since those are more likely to change. That being said, everything in this video is subject to change, so please keep that in mind as you're watching. Starting out with our class tree, these are the talents that have been removed. We have improved Vivify, improved Paralysis, Ferocity of Swen, Damp and Harm, Eye of the Tiger, Generous Pour, Close to Heart, and White Tiger statue as well as Black Ox statue. I was really surprised to see some of these removed, mainly Close to Heart, Generous Pour, and Dampen Harm, though there have been changes to other talents that will fill the gap that these would have left. These talents also may have been removed from the tree, but for some of them, the functionality has been baked into the original talent or worked into another new talent. For the new talents in the class tree, we are starting out with Crashing Momentum. Targets you roll through are snared by 60% for 8 seconds. This is a choice node with the current talent that we have, known as Disable, and this is a much easier form of slow compared to the tab targeting, disable, and then DPSing to keep up time, especially in large packs. As far as I can tell, this ability is uncapped and can provide valuable CC for your tank as they try to kite. This also works for things like Spiteful Weeks to prevent them from getting to players as quickly. That being said, it would be a good idea to take this talent off during Sanguine Weeks. Next up is Bounding Agility. This is just a really short increase to your roll and chi torpedo abilities. Honestly, it is one or two steps in game. I don't see myself using this since the gain for the point is not enough and I could get something better elsewhere. Wind's Reach is a modifier for crashing momentum and for disable. It increases the range on Disable by 5 yards and increases the duration of Crashing Momentum by 3 seconds and now reduces movement speed by an additional 20% for a total of 80% slowed movement speed. Once again, this can be used for CC while tanks kite or for things like Spiteful, but now you definitely want to take this off on Sanguine Weeks. Jade Walk is an out of combat 15% increase to movement speed. I like this, it's nice and simple for doing shroud skips or just general running speeds in dungeons between packs. Pressure Points makes it so Paralysis now removes all enrage effects from the target. If you have heard me talk about utility or mocking class fantasy takes before, you know that this is something that I have referenced multiple times through the idea that Monk has had an ability called Soothing Mist but no actual soothe, but here it is! This is an all enrage effect as opposed to certain specs only being able to remove one stack. This is so nice for Mythic Plus when it comes to group comp diversity for the raging affix, as well as any default raiding mechanic in the key. This gives us something that incentivizes people to bring monks outside of just our damage or healing. Ancient Arts is a modifier for Leg Sweep and Paralysis, and it will reduce the cooldown of these abilities passively by 8 seconds for Paralysis and 5 seconds for Leg Sweep. For rank 2, it is 15 seconds on Paralysis and 10 seconds on Leg Sweep. This is something I would encourage people to take probably all the time, but especially on Raging or Incorporeal Weeks, whenever you find yourself utilizing Paralysis more frequently, and the addition of Leg Sweep in here is a nice form of general utility. Energy Transfer is another way to reduce the cooldown on Paralysis. With a successful kick, you will take 5 seconds off of the existing cooldown. Between Energy Transfer and Ancient Arts, you're able to get Paralysis down to as low as a 25 second cooldown. Quick Footed reduces the duration of snare effects on you by 20%. The value on this is more dependent on the content that you're doing. I could imagine that this is a permanent pick for PvPers, but for Mythic Plus or for Raid, I think it would depend on the encounter and how many snares and slows there are. Spirit's Essence is a really neat one. Using your Transcendence Transfer will snare enemies within 10 yards by 70% for 4 seconds. The enemies that you're slowing must be near your body, your character, when you transfer, not near your clone. It is also important to note that this will trigger combat if you are teleporting near neutral mobs.
Peace and Prosperity reduced the cooldown of Ring of Peace by 5 seconds and the Song of GG cast time by half a second. This has value all of the time, but it does have extra value during weeks like Sanguine or Spiteful for mom displacement. Swift Art makes Roll remove a snare once every 30 seconds. Once again, I'm unsure how much I'll be using this in Mythic Plus. It could be used for the Entangling Affix, but Roll should break these on distance anyway, but it does have a lot of potential for PvPers. Celestial Determination prevents you from being slowed below 90% speed while your Celestial is active. If you're a Misweaver, you're already familiar with this. Chi-Gi has this by default. Even when you do not have Celestial Determination talented, Chi-Gi will remain that way. However, if you do take this talent, it will let Zwen and Nazao work that way as well, and they will prevent you from being slowed below 90%. Chi Proficiency increases your magical damage done by 2% and 4% for rank 2, as well as healing done by 2% and 4% for rank 2. I believe this was meant to be the replacement for Close to Heart, but it is a personal buff, not a raid buff. The value is not lost here by losing Close to Heart, as the healing is healing that we do instead of healing received. Healing Winds is a 15% self-heal when using Transcendence Transfer. This is pretty unique and I could see PvPers using this a lot, as well as Brewmasters for PvE. Martial Instincts increases physical damage done by 2% and 4% for rank 2, as well as avoidance by 2% and 4% for rank 2. This is the replacement for Generous Pour, but again it is a personal buff and no longer a raid buff, so Monk is not going to be losing that avoidance, but the aura for the raid to gain avoidance no longer exists. Lighter Than Air is a new capstone, and I think that this might just be my new favorite ability across the board. I love this so much, I even gave him a little heart on the tooltip. This ability causes roll to make you lighter than air, allowing you to double jump and dash forward 5 seconds after you roll. It seems very basic, but you can actually do so much with this ability. You can jump gaps, you can walk on water, prevent fall damage from very high distances since you can roll mid-air. It also works with mounts, so if you're fast enough, in theory, you could taxi people across gaps or water. I think this is going to be super fun to see how people utilize this ability, but it's also just a nice touch for movement. Fair warning, if you do land on water while lighter than air is active, you will land on the surface and take fall damage and it can and will kill you. Just trust me on that one. Flow of Chi is kind of like a pseudo sans situation where your health is going to indicate which buff you'll be getting. 90% health is increased movement speed. This stack, so with Jade Walk, you're going to be running between packs or mid shrouds, you could be moving up to 20% faster. Between 90% and 35% health, you take 5% less damage, which is really nice for Mythic Plus and for Raid, since we're regularly sub 90% health. And below 35% health, we get increased healing taken by 10%, which is similar to Save Them All, though it is personal. Transcendence Linked Spirit is a neat one. This ability works like Shadow Step, but with a few extra steps. Using this talent makes it so you can transcend directly to an ally whenever you use Transfer. To use this, you apply the Transcendence that would normally place your clone, but you have to select an ally to use it on. It is important to note that this will disable the traditional use of Transcendence as you cannot place it on the ground while being talented into Linked Spirits. You can place it on a ranged as a get out of jail free card if you trust your ranged, or you can place it on your tank and use it to get back into melee after doing a mechanic. This is like Wernstone, but with a 40 yard range. This can be used in so many different ways that I'm sure we'll get to see as more dungeons are released and we're more familiar with them. I will also be doing a video on Transcendence for the War Within and all the different ways to utilize it in the new content with all of these new talent modifiers. Rushing Reflexes is a choice node with Clash, and I honestly had a hard time getting this one to work, so I think it might be bugged or I'm not understanding its functionality. After you roll, you should lunge to the nearest enemy in front of you within 10 yards. This will trigger combat as well. But the only times that I could get this to trigger was when I was already within melee range of the mob, so I didn't need the lunge. And then it would also place me behind the mob that I was fighting, so it was super disorienting. So I think I understand how they want it to work, but I don't think it's currently working properly. And on the same note, we have Clash. This actually used to be a Brewmaster only ability in the past. It is just a quick charge that takes you between 8 and 30 yards to meet you and your target in the middle. Then it roots targets within 6 yards for 4 seconds. 
This again could be used on Spiteful Weeks or for general mob control, but I don't know if Clash would win out against the other slows we have that are just easier to grab earlier in the tree. There has been a handful of other changes to point reductions, like Paralysis and Improved Paralysis are now just one talent and it is based in a tree. All of the others have been reduced by one point as well, with some nerfs affecting spells like Save Them All, as it now only goes to 10% total as opposed to 10% per rank. The complete list is Paralysis, Grace of Crane, Fast Feet, Bounce Back, Fatal Touch, Resonance Fists, Save Them All, and Elusive Mist. Calming Presence has also been buffed up to 6% when it used to be 3, so this is just a nice little bit of extra passive damage reduction for us. And finally, what we have all been waiting for, Fortifying Brew has finally been buffed. It is now a 2 minute cooldown down from a 6 minute cooldown and the DR talent has been changed to 30 seconds of cooldown reduction down from 2 minutes of cooldown reduction. Fort Brew has been my punching bag for the last 7 years or so that I've been playing Monk, and it's finally been turned into a normal length cooldown for the strength of it. This means that Fort Brew with this buff will be replacing the gap that Dampen Harm's removal had left, so while we lost a defensive, we have replaced it with a more consistent one with a potentially lower cooldown depending on your talents. And finally, Fatal Touch has been slightly reworked. In Dragonflight, it was just a 2 point node, 45 seconds of cooldown reduction per rank, but now the damage amp from Touch of Death is returning from Shadowlands, which is a nice touch, and I honestly miss that interaction. So now, after we use Touch of Death, our damage is increased by 5% for 30 seconds. Moving on to our spec tree, given the obscene number of changes that Mistweaver has received in Dragonflight, it really shouldn't be surprising that we're getting only a few changes to the spec tree. The following talents have been removed. Essence Font, as well as the Hot Left Behind by Jade Fire Stomp, Font of Life, Echoing Reverberation, Upwelling, and Clouded Focus. I never thought that I would see the day where Clouded Focus was deleted, but I am so glad that it happened. In my opinion, this was the most problematic ability that Mistweaver has had in a long time. It's been very divisive when it comes to balancing the spec, and I think it has just caused a lot of issues in general with balancing. It promoted degenerate overhealing in raid and generally was unfun to deal with in a raid setting, so I am just over the moon about the removal of that talent. Essence Font is also removed. We knew already that this was going to be taken off of the talent tree, but it is not present in our spellbook either, which a lot of us had kind of guessed that this is what was going to happen considering it had gone through a lot of phases of being the best button ever and that being boring and being the worst button ever and we never used it. So we have finally put Essence Font to bed indefinitely and we will not have to worry about whether or not we're using that anymore. We do have a couple of new talents though, number one being Crane Style, which causes Rising Sun Kick to proc a gust of mist that will heal two allies within 40 yards. Spinning Crane Kick and Blackout Kick also have a chance to proc a gust of mist to heal one ally within 40 yards. We're still testing how this splits exactly, but if you Rising Sun Kick and you're the only target, you will proc two gusts of mist on yourself. In a perfect world, this would split just like Ancient Teachings does, where it only has a chance to heal injured targets, and it seems to proc fairly often. However, by testing so far, it will only proc on the initial real Blackout Kick cast, and not the Cleaves. Same deal with Spinning Crane Kick, where it only seems to proc on the press of the actual Spinning Crane Kick, and not by chance on the channel hits. I am kind of a mastery hater, but I do like that mastery is starting to become something that is in more of our kit, rather than just being something that we avoided like the plague. So I'm hoping it gets to a point where mastery isn't necessarily a sought after stat, but it isn't something that we avoid and that a piece of gear isn't automatically bad just because it has mastery on it. So I do like that this is kind of rounding mastery out a little bit more so it's more part of our everyday kit. Deep Clarity is the new modifier for Zen Pulse. Fully consuming Thunder Focus T makes it so our next Vivify will trigger a Zen Pulse. This is replacing Echoing Reverberation as the additional Zen Pulse proc, and it's nice because it's a little less micromanagement without sacrificing too much functionality. When this tree first came up on the screen, I know you saw Chi Harmony as quickly as I did when I opened it. We are finally getting this ability as a permanent resident. So this was our season 3 and season 4 tier set and it has been turned into a talent. When I first saw this, I laughed so hard because I was actually just talking about how awkward it would be to play without Chi Harmony since it has become so core to our playstyle. But it turns out we will not be giving this up, so very happy to see this on here. 
Now Zen Pulse has not been removed, but it has been reworked into a passive ability. Our Renewing Mist Hot has a chance to cause Vivify to proc a Zen Pulse, and it will also proc on all allies with Renewing Mist, healing them for some amount that is increased by 6% per Renewing Mist active, up to 30%. So 5 mans, don't have to worry about any weird target capping there. Even when I'm solo at the training dummies, the proc rate seems quite high, and it can add some additional healing and a little bit more bang for your buck even just with the instant vivifies. I'm a bit sad that the damage portion has been removed as well as the active on this ability, but I do understand that when pruning, this was one of the lesser used abilities. Overall, I am extremely happy with the changes for both the class tree and the spec tree. I think that we have a lot more decision making when it comes to class talents on a dungeon by dungeon basis or even by affix. And this honestly just makes the spec more exciting all around and I can't wait to get into keys with the new talents. Moving on, we have our never before seen Master of Harmony tree. This is the tree that Mistweaver and Brewmaster share, and this is the second tree that we have seen for Mistweaver's hero talents. Most of this is not yet implemented, so you can only test so many talents, but we can still talk about the mechanics of each. For the base node, we have Aspect of Harmony. With this talent, we store vitality from 10% of our damage done and 20% of our healing done. Then, for 10 seconds after we use Thunder Focus T, our spells and abilities use the stored vitality to deal 25% additional healing over 8 seconds. From my understanding, vitality is just the term that we're using for some value created by healing or doing damage, and then that value is stored. To spend the stored value, we use Thunder Focus T, and as you draw upon the vitality, what sounds like it should be draining the value over time since there's currently no difference between Aspect of Harmony at 1 vitality or at 500k vitality. But from my understanding, it's like pouring water out of a cup and you're gaining that extra 25% healing until you have an empty cup. In terms of a cap, it stops at 593,000, but if you keep trying to fill it, it goes up to 623,000, but it will not pass that number. So I don't want to focus too much on the actual numbers, but it does appear that there is meant to be some type of cap on how much vitality we can store. For the first row on the left node, Manifestation is a very simple increased damage and healing to Cheebers. Unfortunately, Cheebers is optional now, and it's still not a great ability, so I don't know how much value this will get. For the first row center node, we have Purified Spirit. Currently, Purified Spirit is pretty bugged as far as I can tell. First, due to the fact that our stored vitality does not drain as we use it, it just stays at a consistent number. Whatever we used Aspect of Harmony during is the amount of vitality that we hold on to, and I don't think that that's intended. Secondly, this is bugged because the ability is actually doing damage, not healing like it says on the tooltip, and it's hitting things from very, very far away even if I'm not in combat with them. So I do believe that that is meant to either be healing or damage, or both, um, but it doesn't seem like it's doing what the tooltip is saying. And lastly, and probably the biggest one, is that this talent currently procs even if you're not talented into it. This is a choice node, so if you have Harmonic Gambit on, you're still going to be seeing Purified Spirit working. So I like the idea of this, but it's a little too buggy to use properly at the moment, but it is headed in a nice direction so that we don't waste any unused vitality. When it comes to Harmonic Gambit, this is the second choice on this node. It works properly right now, but with Aspect of Harmony potentially being bugged, I'm pretty sure that this is just additional damage during the Aspect of Harmony buff, and it is only working with Blackout Kick's initial hit, not the cleaves. And for the far right node, we have Balance Stratagem. This is not implemented yet, so I cannot test it, but this is a nice passive increase of damage and healing, and there's not a whole lot to talk about, it is just some percent increase for your fire or nature abilities. For the second row, the left choice node, we have Tiger's Vigor. This is just general help with mobility, which I'll never say no to. And then for the choice node, we have Roar from the Heavens. And this is nice because this is actually something that you can position yourselves for, so that slower classes can get Tiger's Lust before something like a Shroud Skip, or even just to keep up during the beginning of a key or between pack to pack. I would like this a lot more if it was Tiger's Lust on yourself, the target, and two closest allies to your target, but that might be asking too much. This could also potentially be used to mass clear things like entangling, but it's unclear if they also benefit from the anti-root or if it's just the movement speed, so I'll test this when it gets implemented. 
Endless Draft is another one that hasn't been implemented yet, but Thunder Focus T, having an additional charge could be really nice when managing Aspect of Harmony. But also looking at the Mistweaver spec tree, we have some additional use for our T talents. With Focus Thunder, we could potentially have four spells empowered by Thunder Focus T. For a mantra of purity, when you cast on yourself your single target healing spells heal for 10% more and grant X heal over 15 seconds. Mistweaver already has infinite self-healing, and now that Clouded Focus is gone, I don't see this being very beneficial, unless the value of the hot ends up being something fairly significant. For a mantra of tenacity, we have Fortifying Brew granting 20% stagger. This will probably be the one that I end up using just because we have that shortened cooldown on Fort Brew and it'll just be nice for overall survivability. On the third row, the left node, we have Overwhelming Force. This is not yet implemented, but it will be a lot of fun, I think. We'll have to see the number and how it interacts with Jade Fire Stomp, if it interacts at all. But with the Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, and Tiger Palm damaging enemies in a line through the primary target, I think that this would be really nice for overall damage for Mistweaver, and it will help us keep mind of our positioning. It could cause some problems with breaking the CC, but that's such a common issue that it isn't really specifically a Mistweaver problem. For the third row center node, we have Path of Resurgence. I kind of don't like this one because I don't want to take Chi Burst, much less use it, but if the Vitality playstyle ends up being super impactful, we may not have a choice. And then for the second part of this talent, as it is a choice node, we have Way of a Thousand Strikes. This is much more of my alley since we do spend most of our time using Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, and Tiger Palm anyway. I'd like to get more out of it where I can. And on the far right, third row, we have Clarity of Purpose. Casting Vivify restores vitality, increasing based on your recent Gust of Mist. The way that I read this means that the higher your Gust of Mist is, which is the higher your mastery is, the more vitality that will get stored. So this is just a little bit more vitality, but you can use those instant vivifies that you get to kind of feed into that battery. And our capstone is Resonance. This is not yet implemented, but when the Aspect of Harmony deals damage or healing, it has a chance to spread to a nearby target. When you directly interact with a target affected by this, it has a chance to intensify. I'm not sure to what degree it intensifies, but it will do additional either healing or damage, I assume. As a result, you get 10% increased damage or healing, so this is just amplifying Aspect of Harmony a bit. Overall, I think that this tree is pretty interesting. It's a little bit more passive than our other tree, Conduit of the Celestials, that we share with Windwalker, but honestly, I think we can use either one. Maybe Conduit will end up being better in Keys, and is more active, and Master of Harmony could be better in Raid, and is more passive, and we'll just have to wait and see as we progress through Alpha and Beta, but I do think that both of them could have their own situations in which they'll be better. For Conduit of the Celestials, this is the tree that we already had seen, and I already did do a video on this that I will link in the description if you haven't seen it, but since last time there has been just a couple of changes. Yulon's Knowledge now increases Rushing Jade Wind's duration to 15 seconds, it was 10, and Jade Sanctuary now lingers for 8 seconds after Celestial Conduit ends, and there has been some visual changes as well, just with the thumbnails and whatnot. I do have a little bit of footage so you can see what the active ability looks like, and so that you, you can see CDR-wise how fast things kind of cool down. Life Cocoon ends up being around a 45 second cooldown with Conduit of the Celestials and Chrysalis Talented. Overall, I am in love with where they're taking Monk into the War Within. They seem much more heavy-handed with getting away from the caster playstyle that we were plagued with in Dragonflight, and we're leaning much more into the melee-based spec once again. I have a couple of concerns regarding our power in PvP specifically, as we have a ton of utility for player displacement through ROP and slows, as well as numerous ways to get out of slows and roots. It seems like it could be impossible to catch a Monk in a PvP setting. I think in keys, our power level is appropriate, 
Tuning aside, our survivability took a small hit due to Dampen Harm's removal, although this may end up being a net neutral or net positive, depending. And then on a per dungeon basis, I think that we'll be changing our class talents much more frequently than before, which adds a lot of depth to the spec and makes it overall more exciting to play Monk, as this makes us more adaptable to various situations. Both of our hero talent trees show a lot of promise in various situations, and those are something that we could swap between frequently as well, so I'm really looking forward to see how these develop and change as we go through alpha and beta. If you guys have any comments or questions, please feel free to join my Discord and ask in there, or you can ask in the comments on YouTube or in the live chats on Twitch or on YouTube as I have recently started uh, dual streaming, so I will be live on both platforms at the same time and I will have access to both chats, so you can ask in either one. Other than that, let me know in the comments which change Miss Weaver has received, or the class as a whole, that you're most excited for. Personally, I think that Clouded Focus going away was what I was the most excited for, and I think that a lot of people might share that sentiment, so we will see. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you are as excited about this as I am, and we will continue to be covering things from Alpha throughout the entire cycle and well into Beta. So I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.